Hello everyone, today we'll get into section 11.2 on systems of linear equations, specifically matrices. So 11.1 was really just a review of what you learned in Math 95 or an equivalent course somewhere else. So stuff from a few courses back, uh, nothing uh, new was covered in 11.1. So we'll get into 11.2 uh, on how to represent uh, these linear systems. Uh, so uh, the key is uh, for these matrices to work, uh, they do have to be linear in nature. In other words, any variables we have has have to be raised to the first power only. So for example, something like 2x minus y is negative 13 is linear. x is raised to the first, y is raised to the first. And uh, since it's a system, we would have at least one other equation then. Uh, we'll do a 3x plus 2y is worth 5. So. The idea with a matrix is, since we know that these variables are all raised to the first power, the action is really in the coefficients. So this is uh, kind of like our work with synthetic division, where uh, really uh, the important parts were happening just with the coefficients. Uh, so to represent that same system, we go with what's called an augmented matrix. So instead of the nice pretty brace on the side, we get brackets on both sides. So our coefficients would be a 2, a negative 1, and a negative 13, a 3, a 2, and a 5. And instead of a couple equal signs, we just use a vertical line in between them and we close the bracket. Uh, we occasionally will also see what's called a uh, coefficient matrix. So that's basically just things that are coefficients of the variables. So two, a negative one, a 3 and a 2. Um, just as a heads up, uh, we don't always necessarily use X's and Y's. Uh, occasionally we'll see subscripts used. So you might see the same system represented as 2X not minus uh, X sub 1 is negative 13 and 3X not plus 2X sub 1 is 5 that's really the same system just instead of calling it x and y occasionally uh, we'll just treat them as multiple input variables and occasionally they do have us practice working backwards as well starting us with a matrix and asking us what system it must have come from So this would be an example of a, uh, a three by three system. Three equations because of it, the three rows and three variables since we have three columns to the left of our collection of equal signs. So the equivalent system would have x or 1x if you want to see the number there plus 2z it's worth 7 2x plus y plus 4z it's equal to 17 and y plus z is worth 5 
So again, you should be comfortable moving back and forth between the different formats. So I'm going to show two matrices and you can decide for yourself which one would be likely easier to solve. So one of those should look easier to solve than the other. Hopefully you picked out this one as being the easier uh, to solve. Uh, it's equivalent if we were to turn it back into just the system instead of the matrix uh, representing the system, we would have x equals 5, y equals 22, and z equals 47 and then our solution would be that ordered triple. So this is our goal. Our goal is to get ones along the diagonal and then zeros in the upper triangle and lower triangle. That is our goal. They call that reduced row echelon form. So let's actually work on solving one of these guys. So we'll do x plus y plus z is worth negative 8. Uh, 2x minus y plus z is worth negative 9. And x plus 2y minus z is worth negative 15. So if I want to solve using matrices, first I'll have to turn it into a matrix. So column one, I'd have a one, two, and a one. Column two, a one, a negative one, and a two. Column three, one, one, negative one. And then our Again, on the other side of the collection of equal signs, negative 8, negative 9, negative 15. So your goal basically is to take this one column at a time. So we'll start with row 1, column 1. My goal is to get a 1 there. already have it. So then my next step is to turn both of these guys into zeros using this row. Uh, so I'll do negative 2 times row 1, add row 2 to that. So you remember that type of idea from your Math 95 or whatever equivalent you took somewhere else. Row operations. Uh, or negative 2 row 1 basically means multiply both sides of equation 1 by a negative 2. So we have negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, positive 16. And row 2 stayed the same. 2, negative 1, 1, negative 9, add them up. There's that 0 we were after. So this one is going to be our new row 2. So we have a 0, a negative 3, a negative 1, and a positive 7. Now I also want to turn this guy into a 0. Uh, so to do that, I'll do the opposite of row 1, and I'll keep row 3, and my answer will be the new row 3. 
So opposite of row 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, positive 8. Row 3, I'd keep it as it was. 1, 2, negative 1, negative 15. My goal was to make this into a 0. That's why we did the opposite of row 1. If I do a negative 1 plus 1, I get the 0 there that I was after. So I have a 0, a 1, a negative 2, and a negative 7. So my new matrix, column 1 looks the way we want it to look. So row 1, I kept it as it was for the moment. New row 2, 0, negative 3, negative 1, positive 7. And new row 3, 0, 1, negative 2, negative 7. So then the goal is keep doing that one column at a time. So now I'm looking to turn this next item on the diagonal into a 1. So we'll do negative one-third of both sides of row 1. Negative one-third times both sides of, I believe I said row 1 inadvertently, row 2. That's our new row 2. All right, uh, I'm gonna flip the page. So I would even just recommend pause it for a moment and see if you can get the new row two before I get there. Okay, so welcome back. So now our matrix, we have uh, col or row one, 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 negative eight. The new, new row two, Anything times zero is still zero. Negative one third times negative three is the positive one we're after there. Negative one times negative one third is positive one third. And seven times negative one third is negative seven thirds. And row three is just along for the ride. So we do get to play with fractions along the way. So now instead of this one and this one being on my hit list wanting to turn them into zeros, now it's this one and this one that I want to turn into zeros. Uh, a little note so that we don't destroy our work on the previous column, row one will remain unchanged, so I'm going to have to manipulate row two to do that. So row one will have to stay as it was previously uh, row 2, to get a 0 out of these two elements, I'd have to multiply row 2 by a negative 1. So row 1, 1, 1, 1, negative 8. Row 2, 0 is its own opposite. Negative 1, negative 1 third, and positive 7 thirds. This is going to be the new row 1. But because we didn't do any manipulation on row 1, we have the 1 staying the same and 0 times anything is 0. We retain the 1 on the diagonal that we were hoping to keep. 1 minus 1 is 0. 3 thirds minus 1 third is 2 thirds. And negative 24 thirds uh, plus 7 thirds. And <coughs> So then we have a negative, and that would be 17 thirds. So that's our new row one. So that's this guy taken care of. Now we want this guy taken care of as well. Uh, so we'll do opposite of row two, and we'll keep row three, add them together, and that should give us a new row three. So row two's opposite, uh, we saw before was zero, negative one, negative one third, and positive seven thirds. 
row three as it was before, zero, one, uh, negative two, or if you like, negative six thirds, uh, negative seven, or uh, negative 21 thirds, if you want to keep the common denominator idea going there. So you have a zero and a zero, and let's see, negative seven thirds, and that would be negative 14 thirds. So this guy's a zero, this guy's a zero. Now our next order of business though is going to be getting a one into row three. If you'd like before you make your next matrix you can take care of that on this step. So I would do negative three sevenths times both sides of row two to make our new uh, row three, sorry. New row three, that way we have a one on the diagonal as well. So zero times anything is zero. Zero times anything is zero. Negative seven thirds times negative three sevenths is a positive one. And negative three sevenths times negative 14 thirds is a positive two. So what does our matrix look like now? So our new row one, we have a one, a zero, a two thirds and a negative 17 thirds. Row two and our zero, one, one third, negative seven thirds. In our new, new version of row three, we're very close to where we need to be. So where are the next two zeros that we're after? Here and here. Remember, we want, we want to keep ones on the diagonal, zeros everywhere else. Okay, so again, uh, because we don't want to destroy our previous work on uh, row one and row two, when we do the work, we will keep row one and row two the same. We will manipulate row three. So I'm trying to cancel a two thirds. I've got a one here. So if I multiply one by a negative two thirds, then I have a positive two thirds with a negative two thirds, and I get that zero that I'm after. So this will be our new row one, our last version of row one for that matter. So row one as it was, one zero, two thirds, negative 17 thirds, and negative two thirds of zero is always zero. One times negative two thirds, negative two thirds, and two times negative two thirds is negative four thirds. So a one, a zero, a zero, so this is looking more and more like how we wanted it to. Uh, so then we have a negative 21 thirds, which is a negative seven. All right, that takes care of this. So our last non-zero element, we're gonna keep row two how it was, that way we don't lose uh, the one that we had. A one third with a one, what would I have to do to row three? to make this happen with these two numbers. And I'll start copying down row two and I'll let you think about that. Hopefully you come to a conclusion by the time I'm done there. So row three, we would need to multiply both sides by a negative one third. So zero times anything is zero. One times negative one third is negative one third. Two times a negative one third is negative two thirds. So a zero, a one on the diagonal, since this is our new row two, a zero and negative nine thirds is negative three. So our last version of the matrix before our solution, new row one, one, zero, zero, negative seven, New row two, zero, one, zero, negative three. And row three, zero, zero, one on the diagonal and a two. So in our solution set is the ordered triple negative seven, negative three, 
positive 2. The order triple. The order does matter. Um, this is equivalent to saying x is negative 7, y is negative 3, z is positive 2. Uh, a different order uh, would mean something different. So we want 1's on the diagonal, zeros everywhere else. All right. Uh, so that should give you enough information uh, to play with this section. Uh, this was R uh, 11.2. I would recommend 7 to 73 on the odds. If you have any other questions, please come and see me. Otherwise, I'll see you next time, and stay safe out there.